There are 62 lifts in North America that are being built for this upcoming ski season. I'm going to give you some thoughts on each one, such as a summary of what's happening and predictions on impact to the skiing experience. There are so many projects that we're going to have to split this into two parts. Today we're discussing the Midwest and East Coast, and in part one we discussed the West Coast. So buckle up because this is going to be a long one, or skip ahead to the ski areas you're interested in using the chapters I've marked. In credit where credit's due, this list is based mostly on articles and databases from liftblog.com, but I've independently verified that these projects are going on through social media, webcams, press releases, or other means unless I denote otherwise. Although I'm a bit of a lift nerd myself, I'm not going to bore you with statistics and technicalities, but will rather focus on how the lift improves the skiing experience at each resort. We've got a lot to cover, so let's not waste any more time. Here is a full breakdown of the 2023 North American lift projects. We'll start with the smallest lift being constructed this summer, which is at Botano Winter Park, North Dakota. They're building a T-Bar. Yes, they still manufacture T-Bars. This is technically a replacement for an older T-Bar, but based on their wording, I am going to assume that the old very rarely ran. The T-Bar, running up the Fox Blue, will provide a lot easier access to Fox and Sunnyside than the chairlift currently does, which will make flapping those runs much more fun. It also offers some redundancy, ensuring the main mountain is still served if something happens to the chairlift. Next, we head over by Minneapolis to Buck Hill, Minnesota. They're replacing their 4-quad with a new fixed grip quad dubbed Center. The old lift was a squeeze for four people, and it was nearing the end of its service life. This new lift will be the final piece in making Buck Hill's whole chairlift fleet from this century, which is something most Midwestern hills can't say. Being the lift in the middle of the mountain in the only advanced terrain means that it is crucial the lift has capacity and reliability, both of which the new lift will provide. Going way up to the Arrowhead region of Minnesota, we come across the first of three detachable six-packs being built in the Midwest this summer at Lutzen Mountains. This lift is a reliever for the bridge double and a replacement of the 10th Mountain Triple. The new six-pack, called Raptor Express, will look very similar to the existing Caribou Express. It will load just lookers left of the bridge chairlift and will terminate at the old 10th Mountain unload at the summit of Eagle Mountain, making it easier to access the Blacks. Bridge will offer relief and redundancy to Raptor and will continue to serve the Alpine Slide. This is absolutely a necessary replacement, especially when placed into the context of a massive expansion to take place in the coming decade. Bridge's location right in the center of the resort led to it getting overwhelmed, so this reliever will be warmly welcomed. Heading back south, we see Wild Mountain, Minnesota, who are replacing their oldest lift with a new fixed grip quad. The old Chair 3 quad, which was built in 1973, was at the end of its service life. Being right in the middle of most of Wild's advanced terrain means it's a pretty popular lift, so the new lift will be built for the sake of reliability, along with a capacity and comfort boost. With the new Chair 3 becoming the out-of-base workhorse, the parallel Chair 2 is going to be relegated to relief duties, only running on peak days. Just over 10 miles southeast of Wild Mountain is Trollhaugen, Wisconsin, who are in the process of building their own new fixed grip quad, which will look just like the standing Chair 2. The Troll are building this lift as the anchor of a southeastward expansion that will add new terrain for all ability levels. The new Lift 1, tentatively named Summit, will take the place of the Summit Rope Toe as the sole lift service of the area. Troll and its MSP aimed 100% night lighting coverage is getting an expansion. Late Night Fridays just got better, if that's even possible. Next, let's jump over to Michigan's Upper Peninsula to discuss the second of the Midwest's new six packs. This one is being built at Snow River, over on the Jackson Creek Summit side, to replace the lifts formerly named Chippewa Double, Leelanau Triple, and Voyager's Quad. This new Voyager Express is replacing the old 3-lift combo with a much lower capacity, but it was rare that the old combo actually achieved their full capacity or utilized it either. I have no doubt about the ability of the six-pack to chew through lines. Having the ride time means more laps down some of the most popular runs at Snow River, and the detachable means it'll be easier to load and unload than all three of the old lifts. This is most likely the first improvement of many to come at Snow River, so seeing a detachable, let alone a six-pack in the Midwest, is huge. The second of six projects going on in Michigan this year is happening at Nubs Knob. They're building a new fixed grip quad to replace the old green chair. While a detachable quad was in consideration for the new lift, they opted for a fixed grip because a detachable wasn't economical and would disrupt the existing traffic flow pattern. Green is the main out-of-base people mover at Nubs Knob, so it's critical that it is reliable and has a high, high capacity, hence the replacement. 
Along with serving the popular front side, Green is the portal to the rest of the resort. Just over a mile from Nubs Knob is the Highlands at Harbor Springs, Michigan, which was formerly known as Boyne Highlands. The Highlands is building the third of the Midwest six packs this year to replace a trio of old triple chairlifts, Valley, McGully, and Camelot. Camelot 6 will instantly become the most advanced lift in the Midwest, being the fastest lift in the Midwest, offering bubbles, heated seats, and a loading conveyor, and featuring a fully automated safety bar system, the first of its kind in the United States. The terrain that Camelot serves is some of the most popular beginner and intermediate terrain in the resort, and it's located right next to the day lodge, meaning that the lift is going to be a monster people mover. The bar will lower, lock, unlock, and raise automatically, making it the safest chairlift ever built and the most kid-friendly as well. A little to the south is another of the Boyne-owned Michigan resorts. Guess what this one's named? Yep, it's called Boyne Mountain. Very creative. They're currently undertaking a double lift replacement, which isn't quite as majestic as their Disciples 8 project from last year, but is super important all the same. The new Boyneland lift will be a fixed grip quad replacing a fixed grip triple. The new lift will load further to the looker's left, right next to the Mountain Express, which will allow for much easier access from the base area. It will have a loading carpet, allowing it to run twice as fast as the old lift, shortening the ride time to just 4 minutes. Boyneland serves as the gateway to the Disciples terrain, and its ultra-modern 8-place detachable, which serves the most popular beginner terrain in the resort, so this upgrade will make the beginner experience much more smooth at Boyne Mountain. After all, who wants to wait in line or sit on the chairlift for forever, just trying to get to your favorite terrain? The upgraded Boyneland will really help take pressure off of the aging Mountain Express, as it's a much more direct route to Disciples and it's finally going to be accessible to people walking in from the parking lots. The other replacement this year is a fixed grip triple replacing the old Super Bowl fixed grip quad. Super Bowl, located on the far southern end of the resort, primarily serves experts. As such, the new lift will be the fastest fixed grip chairlift in the Midwest, albeit aided with a loading carpet. The bottom terminal will be shifted just slightly downhill to allow for easier access. While not quite as transformative to the crowd flow as Boyneland, this new chairlift is sure to be a favorite of advanced skiers. Heading down towards Detroit, we see the other two Michigan projects of this summer. The first is out Mount Holly. They're currently building a new detachable quad because why not? The 4 minute ride on the old lift 6 triple was too long, so they're building this new lift, dubbed Lightning Express, so that the ride time is only a minute and a half. That seems like a wise investment. To each his own, I suppose. This backside lift is the longest at Holly and is crucial to serving their advanced terrain, so this upgrade does make sense in principle. The other Detroit area project is happening at Alpine Valley, Michigan. This is one of the couple projects I was unable to independently verify, so we're again basing off of the lift log database. This lift is a new fixed grip triple to replace the incumbent chair 2 and 3 twin doubles as an out of base workhorse. This alignment serves all the terrain parks, which is a huge part of business and Midwest skiing, so keeping a reliable, high-capacity lift is critical for keeping their customer base happy. The old lifts were 55 years old, ergo at the end of their service life. Next, let's head over to a state that I'm guessing many of you don't often associate with skiing, Indiana. Perfect North Slopes, which is actually a Cincinnati area ski hill, is currently building a new fixed grip quad to replace the old red triple. This is purely a capacity upgrade. With a loading carpet, the new red will be much easier to load, reducing stops in addition to the increased design capacity, further greatening the capacity gap from the old. The new red will also spin faster than the old lift. This is an essential upgrade as the main out of base lift. Next, let's jump a couple states east to Snowshoe, West Virginia. The resort is building a new fixed grip quad to replace the Powder Monkey Triple, which is located right in the middle of the Snowshoe Basin part of the resort and serves a bunch of beginner terrain. The new lift will have a larger capacity than the old, which will take pressure off of Ball Hooter, Grab Hammer, and Powder Ridge since it's in such a central location. The old lift was also one of two remaining from Snowshoe's inaugural season in 1974-75, so it was towards the end of its service life. Over in Virginia is Massanutten, who are building a detachable quad to replace the old fixed grip quad known as Peak or Six. The new Peak Express, servicing the summit, is the longest lift in the resort, hence why it is going detachable. This is a small east coast resort we're talking about, so the ride time is only going to be a couple minutes. Detachables are pretty rare at ski areas of this size, so it should be a relatively large draw, which I'm sure was a part of the decision to go detachable. It'll also have a small capacity boost. Now, let's discuss the first of four lift projects happening in New York this summer, this one at Holiday Valley. 
Two years after finishing the Yodeler Quad, Holiday Valley is replacing its oldest detachable quad, the Mardi Gras Express, with a detachable six-pack. Holiday Valley has a very advanced lift fleet for being a medium-sized northeast ski area, as they will now have three detachable quads and the six-pack, along with a whole fleet of other fixed grips serving in shorter alignments or as relievers. The new flagship and longest lift of the resort, Mardi Gras, will have a higher capacity than the old, getting guests out of the base area and onto the mountain quicker. Since Holiday Valley is already recognized as having a very refined lift system, the six-pack is an overkill, but rather the new face of the resort and its willingness to invest where most competitors won't. Further east in New York is Bel Air, who are building a fixed grip quad to replace their Lift 7 triple in a modified alignment. This new Lift 7 will load on the other side of the Overlook Lodge, allowing direct access from Lightning and from the upper runs via a new skier bridge, something the old alignment lacked. Instead of everyone having to funnel down to the Bel Air Express, people will have an option between that and 7. It'll make accessing these middle runs a whole lot easier. It will, however, have a longer ride time due to the longer alignment. The second of the New York state-owned ski areas is Gore Mountain, who are constructing a new fixed grip quad to replace their old Bear Cub Poma lift. The lift will be over twice as long as the old Poma, and will unload onto Lower Sunway just below its big turn. The Bear Cub run will be extended all the way up to the new lift unload, allowing laps on both Sunway and Bear Cub. The new lift will have a loading conveyor, which will be perfect for beginners progressing from conveyor lifts, marking a huge upgrade in Gore's learning experience. And rounding out our RDA trio, we have Whiteface New York. They're building one of the most complex systems of this whole summer, as they're currently building a two-stage detachable quad to connect the Bear Den side of the resort with the rest of the mountain. This lift reportedly cost over $16.5 million. Dubbed the Notch, it will begin next to the Bear Den Lodge, significantly increasing utilization of that base area. It'll have a mid-unload along Boreen, allowing for easy access to the base lodge and all of the greens between the bases. Before, Moose Cut was the only way from Bear Den to Base Lodge. It'll have its top station at Legacy Lodge, allowing for easy access to the rest of the resort. All in all, this lift is filling a major void, both spatially and mathematically, improving the beginner experience along the way. Next, we'll jump up to Connecticut, where Mount Southington is completely revamping their beginner hill. They're building a new ski school building and a new fixed grip triple chair to replace the old North Star Double. This new lift, albeit extremely short, will be a step up from the old double, offering the ability to load more people per chair, thus allowing ski school groups to take up fewer chairs total. The old lift was built in its original location in 1976, so this is also a reliability move as the only other lift servicing the Bunny Hill is the Snowflake Carpet. One state to the north in Massachusetts is a similarly small ski resort, Berkshire East. They, however, are building a much larger project, a yet-to-be-named Base to Summit Detachable Quad. This is Berkshire East's first detachable, so this will be a huge step up in the overall skiing experience at the resort, making it so much quicker and easier to access almost all of the terrain. The Summit Fixed Grip Quad will remain to support the new lift, while the Mountaintop Triple will be relocated next summer to an expansion area on the northeast side. Berkshire East is making moves. Big moves. Despite all of the big mountains in Vermont, the only project in the state this summer is occurring at the Middlebury College's Snow Bowl. They're building a new fixed grip quad to replace this rapidly aging Shihan lift. The old Shihan double was built in 1984 but was rapidly becoming a liability. As such, the upgraded lift will be a much more reliable than the old, serving most of Snowball's beginner and intermediate terrain. This new lift will be a huge draw, and although the lift doesn't really need the capacity upgrade, being able to seat four per chair is always nice. One state to the east in New Hampshire, there are two projects going on. At Loon Mountain, a new fixed grip quad with a loading carpet is being built on the Lincoln side of the mountain to anchor a small 30-acre expansion. This expansion adds a handful of new beginner and low intermediate runs. Along with serving that pod, this new lift, Timbertown, will serve to connect the town of Lincoln with the Lincoln Express pod, thus allowing direct access from the escape route and town lots to the rest of the mountain, which is something that was sorely lacking for a while. This lift is not only advancing the beginner experience at Loon, but connecting the town to the mountain. It's a project that has been highly anticipated and really will be transformative, despite its small scale. Skier and traffic flow will be smoother, and the beginner experience elevated. The other project in the state, being constructed at Atatash, is equally transformative. The old Summit Triple got complaint after complaint, year after year. 
Despite being the longest lift at the resort, the old Summit Triple was fixed grip, leading to a theoretical ride time over 12 minutes, but often eclipsing 20 minutes due to stops and it not running at full speed. It broke down nearly on a regular basis and got massive lines when it was running slow. So finally, after 25 years of complaining, the much abhorred Summit Triple is being replaced with the Mountaineer, a new detachable quad named to honor a historic railroad running nearby. It will have a huge theoretical capacity upgrade and, in addition, it won't be stopping as much and will be running at or near full speed more often. It'll be faster, it'll be more reliable, it'll overall be a win for Atatosh. Over in Maine is Sunday River, who are in the process of building two lifts this summer. The bigger and more anticipated of the two is happening on Barker Mountain. The old Barker Quad is being replaced with a new detachable six-pack, which will have red bubbles and heated seats. The old lift was constantly breaking down for days or weeks at a time, and often amassed long lines due to it running extremely slow. The new lift will be one of the fastest around, and will offer a huge capacity upgrade over the old. Barker 6 and Jordan 8, which was constructed last year, highlight the incredibly aggressive infrastructure investing strategy parent company Boyne Resorts has displayed for the past years. Barker 6 is absolutely huge for Sunday River, finally making skiing that part of the mountain enjoyable again. The other lift project going on is a second lift in the Merrill Hill sector. This area is mostly ski and ski out lots, so one would imagine that Merrill Hill 2, Chair 20, a new fixed grip triple, and sister ship Merrill Hill 1, Chair 19, are just to serve that real estate. However, 19 opened a couple of new beginner and intermediate runs, so it only makes sense that 20 is going to open a small expansion of its own of steeper trails. Merrill Hill 2 is also located near a lot of land Sunday River owns but hasn't expanded onto, so the small expansion this year and the Jordan 8 build last year set the stage for a much larger expansion into the Western Reserve. Merrill Hill 2 and Barker 6 are each transformative for Sunday River in their own way, Barker by revamping the Barker Mountain experience, and Merrill Hill by opening an expansion and setting the stage for further expansion. The third and final lift being built in Maine this year is happening at Sugarloaf. They're building a huge detachable quad, which is actually the old Swift Current lift from Big Sky, Montana, albeit with extensive refurbishment and a nicer looking new terminal skin. The name of the new lift is Bucksaw Express, which pays homage to the old Bucksaw Double that was removed in 2015. Bucksaw Express is opening a 450 acre expansion, known as West Mountain, with a dozen new trails. The variety of new trails will cover all ability levels, and the new quad should have ample capacity and speed to make lapping the area quite enjoyable. This will help spread skiers out around the mountain, and offers an exciting new area for Sugarloaf regulars to explore. Although they couldn't get their hands on a new lift, Bucksaw Express is going to elevate the Sugarloaf skiing experience. Up in the province of Quebec, there are three projects under construction at the moment. The first is at Bromont, who are building a new detachable quad to replace the old fixed grip quad on the Versant des Épinettes. The Versant des Épinettes has a handful of intermediate runs, and also a couple of advanced and beginner runs. The new lift will have double the capacity of the old chairlift and will run twice as fast as the old. As their third detachable, it will make the Epinet area way more pleasant to ski, and will elevate the Bromont experience altogether. Over at Sommet Olympia, Quebec, a new fixed grip quad is going in to replace the old B-triple. The previous was old and ran on diesel, so they're building the new lift to increase reliability and decrease emissions and fuel costs. The new base to Summit Quad, dubbed Apollo, will be only a slight step up in the skiing experience at Sommet Olympia. It'll have a similar speed and only a small capacity increase. In fact, the biggest upgrade will be the loading carpet on the new lift, allowing consumers of the beginner runs it serves to load more easily. Up at Mont Tremblant is another of the couple lift projects of this summer that I can't confirm, and to be completely honest, there's very little I could find about this project. So here's what is known. There's a new fixed grip quad going in for a real estate development called Lim de Tremble. It's somewhere on the Soleil side of the resort. It's probably going to be somewhere lookers right of Port du Soleil, but I can't find too much concrete information about it. I don't think this lift is going to be open to the general public. What's awesome about this summer is that Canada is receiving its first two Apex in the same summer, one in the west at Whistler Blackcomb, and one in the east at our next discussion point here, Mount St. Louis Moonstone, Ontario. Adventure 8 is replacing a detachable six-pack, which I believe might be the first six-pack to be replaced in North America. Adventure 8 will also have the highest capacity in North America, so how will that be accomplished? Well, this unique L-shaped terminal, located lower on the mountain than that of the old lift, 
allows for easy access from all of the runs and the base lodge while still allowing for close chair spacing. Obviously, the conveyor and gates are needed to keep the operation running smoothly. For a lift nut like me, adventure is just plain cool, but for most gears, it'll just help get more laps per day. And finally, let's head to Beaver Valley Ski Club, Ontario. I was able to verify this project despite Beaver Valley being a private ski club. They're replacing their old avalanche double with a new fixed grip quad. They like to refer to it as the Avi chair. The old Avi was getting quite old and it was at the end of its service life. Avi serves one of only two double blacks at Beaver Valley, which tells me that it is quite the popular lift and as such needs the reliability upgrade. The capacity upgrade is secondary due to it being private. We'll end it up here, having gone over all of the Midwest and East Coast lift projects. Go ahead and watch the first part of this video if you haven't already, or go check out one of our Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts or Ski Resort Comparison videos. If you made it all the way through this video, I really appreciate you for watching. As always, please leave any questions down below. I'd also love to hear all of y'all's opinions on these lift projects down below as well. Once again, thank you for watching. All my love, I'm out.